Good morning, Knife fans. Another interesting one. I think it's going to be very interesting, actually. From a brand, another brand with a very weird name called Petrified Fish. If you remember, I did a, a, demo, a review on one from a few months ago that was, you know, basic 12 CV steel. Um, it was only like $24 or something like that with a, with a wood handle. And, you know, just a nice, clean, little, elegant knife. Um, works, you know, really well. Really, really good slicer. Very thin a little bit flexible, but nice thin blade, high grind. Very cool little model uh, uh, from them. I don't remember which one. It's the PF719. So I decided to get one of their nicer ones. So this is probably going to be, I think, one of the best knives you can buy for under 50 bucks if you want a little bit of a beefier knife but still EDC friendly. Um, this is going to be one of, the, one, of the, one of the better ones you can get. So we'll compare it to some of the other brands here. We'll go through the specs and stuff. So which one am I talking about? First, let's unbox it. So this is the name of it is the PFP01. And the name of it is the Beluga. So think of the Beluga Whale. That's the name of it. it uses K110 steel. We'll go into the specs on that in a moment. So it comes packaged up pretty nice. Got a nice little microfiber for cleaning. And... Huh. Phosphor bronze washers, extra screws. That's kind of interesting. I've never seen a knife come with extra washers. I can't imagine. I've never worn a knife out. I've uh, never worn the washers out. Um, but that's kind of cool that they come with a spare set and it comes with a spare set of screws. Everything but the pivot screw. So, all right. Interesting. It comes in a little Ziploc baggie. Let's open that up. All right, what's that say? Huh? Just the, just the label. And then I guess I don't have to cut this. Maybe I can just pull that apart. Or does that click in? Huh? All right, there we go. So this model is called the Beluga. You can get it in different colors. Uh, you can get one with a black handle, um, black with a black blade. You can get it in a almost like a denim colored uh, micarta with a, a stone washed uh, blade. You can get it in tan, tan with a black blade. And then you can get this sort of lightish blue. What are they even calling it? I guess they're just calling it gray. So the G10 is very nice. It's uh, weight on this is, I don't have a scale here. It's on the heavier side. I would say this is probably somewhere up in the four and a half to five ounce range. It is a little bit heavier and you'll see why when I open it. You can also tell just by looking at how thick those steel liners are. This is a really robust knife, but it is pretty thin. That's what I kind of like about it. So it's got some heft to it. Very deep carry pocket clip. Um, actually protrudes up a little bit from the end, and I love it. They have it to where that does not stick up at all, so no hot spot. Sometimes they come up at an angle, and that's what pushes into your hand, and when you grip it, it just drives it into your palm. That won't happen. Um, this is tip up only, but there is a channel cut in there, so if you were to remove those two screws and flip it around to the other side and slide that down in and then, you know, use those screws to secure it. So pretty cool. I like that. I like the fact that they hid the lanyard hole because I have no use for a lanyard. I don't know who walks around with a lanyard. I guess if I was on a boat all day, maybe I would use one, but um, I like that it's hidden. You don't have to see the hole there. So, all right, packaging and cool extras aside, what is it about the knife? Well, it's a front flipper, uses a three-point... I think it's like 3.46, so basically a three and a half inch blade. We'll do the measurements here. Um, it is a front flipper, liner lock. However, you can flip it. There's just enough there to grab that blade. So even though there's no thumb stud, you can very easily flick it open without even giving it a flip. Action is very good. This is on, well, obviously phosphor bronze washers. Action out of the box, very nice. Opens up readily, closes. Yeah, that works real well. Blade centering, 
pretty much dead on. I mean, that's, you know, that's centered. All right, cool. So let's get some actual measurements. Blade, the actual cutting edge is about three and a quarter. The blade itself is about three point, it's just under three and a half. Handle length is four and a half. So that gives us an overall length of about an eighth and an eight. Yeah, it's not quite, oh, I'm sorry, eight and a quarter, eight and a quarter. So three and a half inch blade, eight and a half, uh, eight and a quarter, or eight and a half inch overall length. A little bit of jimping, although I'll be honest, it doesn't really give you a whole lot of purchase. Um, kind of feels like it's just more, I mean, I can see the value there just being more for like indexing. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't actually uh, let you do, you know, it doesn't really hold your thumb, your finger back. The back of the blade's nice. It's got some very nice touches to this blade. And that's what we're gonna talk about in a second. We're gonna talk about the steel, then we'll look at the cut, how it cuts and stuff. Very interesting how it has just this swedge here. You've got a fuller along the top and then it tapers down and then tapers back out. So it's a pretty well supported tip. A lot of belly on that blade. Like, and it's a very, very high grind. What I like about it is I should, hopefully, there's just enough there to get my, um, you know, my Lansky sharpener on there. So if I ever had to touch it up or anything, there's just enough where it's flat and not ground. That's always the problem when you have a knife that goes all the way up. The grind goes all the way up to the spine is then this has no place really to go on there because it's going to rock. You're not going to be able to keep that angle straight. You have to have at least a bit of a flat edge for this thing to kind of clamp on there and hold straight so that then as you're inserting your rods and going at an angle, the knife isn't doing this, right? So I'm glad that they left at least that little bit because some knives like my Spyderco, uh, Paramilitary 2, can't use that sharpener. If the thing just constantly moves around on it and your, your, your edge is all over the place. So that one's got to be done by hand. Um, so let's talk about the steel. It's K110, which is a steel that I wasn't that familiar with. So then I looked it up. It turns out it's actually a decent steel. So K10, uh, I'm getting this from the Steel Wheel website because they use it on their $300 Bruiser 500 knife. It is a cold work tool steel from Austria. It's actually made by Bowler. So analog K10 is better known as D2 steel. Um... It is a dimensionally stable, high carbon, high chromium, 12% steel, uh, particularly suitable for air hardening. It is also good for toughness. Due to its strength and durability, K110 has excellent characteristics for a blade. Although high in carbon, it is not easily oxidized and does not corrode. So, all right. I don't know if I'd put it in salt water, but K110, it is a bowler steel. It is made in Austria. And that's, a, that's interesting for a sub $50 um, Chinese made knife. And I know, you know, we've talked about the other Chinese blades and stuff like that. The Kaiser Towser K with 154 CM. You know, great pocket knife, blade steel, beautiful G10, really nicely done. And, you know, it's $69 or $79 on ball bearing pivots. I mean, it is, this is just one of the nicest opening knives that I've got. Um, you've got your CJRB. Um, the Scoria, I think that was around 69 bucks. Really nice, very thin, nice EDC. Flipper, thumb studs. It's got a nice blade with their proprietary blend of a powdered steel. It's a, it's a basically a kind of a D2. Um, for over here for 50 bucks, you got your Artisan um, Sirius. Really nice, wicked blade. Very, just incredibly sharp out of the box. Um, really, really sweet action. Flies open. You got your Civivis, another great brand, uh, subsidiary of We. That's the Drift Appala Appalachian Drifter 2. And then we've got our uh, Civivi Riffle. Again, great, great blades. These are both, I think, 50 bucks. So this is right in there. Actually, one of the cheaper ones here. Other than this little guy here that was like $24 or $26 or something with shipping, the Blue is probably the next cheapest one on the table out of these Chinese knives. Not by much, but just a couple bucks. But it's also the brawniest. Like that is, there is no wiggle up and down. Lockup is good, not too early, not too late. Um, the action is sweet out of the box. Um, it's a front flipper or just, you know, use that fuller to, to hook your thumb. Um, fits in the hand really nice. If you've got big hands, 
it, it does sit really nice. You've got no hot spots. Because it is thin, I will say it's it's fairly narrow, but because it's taller this way, it does lock into your hand really well. Um, you don't have a finger choil, but it does have enough of a grip there, and there is enough of that to help keep your hand from sliding up. If you had to jam it into something, something, not someone. This is YouTube, remember. Um, let's see. Oh, how sharp is it? How sharp? I always do that. It's like the first cut goes in, then I change the angle or I do something. Yeah, so it is slicing. And then the next one doesn't. So am I doing something wrong when I do something, <laughs> when I do these tests? Because that blade feels wicked sharp. It's like, it's, it just it depends at the angle. Or am I turning it too much like that? I don't know. When you, when you kind of go at it straight on, it does slice very nice. Will it do a push test? Uh, let's see. It does. Yeah, so it does an effortless push, push test. Really nice. Yeah, that's, that's sharp out of the box. I got no problems with that. I don't know what I was doing, why I was getting it to tear. I think it was going in and I was turning the blade so it's not slicing straight anymore. Just tearing it like doing that. Anyway, what do I like about it? I like the feel. I like the size. It's big, but it's it's fairly thin. That'll sit in the pocket. You're going to feel the weight. It's easily the heaviest knife on this table. <laughs> I mean, this thing weighs nothing. This thing weighs... That, this one may, may weighs less than anything. It has thin liners, thin blade, and uh, carbon fiber scales with some micarta. That's probably going to be the lightest here. It's also the smallest. But yeah, this is easily... Yeah, it's easily the heaviest knife here. But it opens nice. It's a big knife. If you like big knives, they do sell a mini that's about a three inch blade. So same knife, just a little bit smaller. And I looked at those, but those I, I tend to, like this, I love the Civivi Appalachian Drifter. I don't carry it much because it's just so damn small. It's like opening it sometimes can be awkward because I have to hold, I got to fold hold it with my fingertips. I can't just grab it. If I grab it, it just disappears into my hand. <laughs> I wish they had this in like a three and a half inch blade with that Bowie almost uh, clip style, almost like a little mini Bowie type blade. I think this is a phenomenal knife. It was just a little bigger. If they made an XL that was a little heavier duty and not so much, you know, such a tiny little thing, it's a nice little gentleman's knife, but it's definitely, uh, it's definitely on the small size if you got hands like mine. I mean, the knife is... The, whole, the knife is the size of my middle finger. <laughs> it's just it's little. <laughs> Not so much with this one. This one I can grab a handful on. This is something if I had to sit there and cut up a whole bunch of cardboard or carve a stick into a point or something, and it's like I feel like I get a lot more done. It's going to be less beating up on my hands. You know, a nice big knife like that, until they're too big, but a knife that really fits, fits your hand properly, you can work very comfortable with. You don't have to really grab it to keep it from twisting and moving around in your hand. This little guy I'd be holding with my fingertips. I'd be holding out here. And I'd be having to pinch it harder to keep it from moving around. And your fingers are going to get fatigued and cramping that much easier. So that's the thing with a knife. You know, if you just open up a package, whatever. I could I could carry this if I was in the office or something and I needed something just small and discreet. I could certainly carry that. So if I just had to, you know, open up a UPS package, you know, I got a new laptop or something and had to open it up, you know, something like that would be perfect. But if you're actually going to be out somewhere outside or wherever where you need it, you know, you might have to get some actual work done. For me, I tend to gravitate towards the larger knives. I feel like I get, get more work done. I've got more cutting power. And it's actually less work on my hand to grip something a little larger. It wants to kind of stay put without me having to really pinch it so I can work longer without my hand cramping up and needing a break. So anyway, that's the Beluga. $46. Comes in a whole bunch of different colors. Unco uncoated blades or, or uh, black wash blades. Um, comes with spare parts. All this for $46. It's a really, really nice design. It's very clean. The backspace, everything's been... I mean, really, there's no lips there or anything to catch on. Everything is fully flushed. It's been, it's been radiused and polished properly. Everything fits up great. Sometimes you see, well, the G10 scales are, you know, 
half a millimeter off from the back spacer, so there's like a shelf or a lip there. There's not. I mean, the edges are all flush. It's, it's a very well-executed blade. The grind is really nice. It's sharp out of the box. The only thing I could say is the jimping could be a little bit more. It could be a little bit more if you want to be useful, but it, I have knives that don't have any jimping at all. So, you know, it, it, to me, this is more of an aesthetic touch, but it's not going to do much for you. Like that one has a little bit, it doesn't look much different, but if you look close, you'll see that the, the one on the riffle is actually a little bit deeper. And so this one gives you just a little bit of bite. This one, you feel it. Like I said, I'm going to use it more for indexing. I know if more of my thumb is here versus back here, but that's about it. But it's a very nice knife. The action's sweet. Not crazy about front flippers in general. I just not. I'm just, I think it's just a new fad. People were like, oh, everyone's got other flippers. We need something different. And they come up with this and it's like, all right, you came up with something different, but it's not better. Some of the knives are awkward to get to. It depends. You have to sometimes give it a flick. You have to adjust your grip. To me, it's not as intuitive, I guess, with anything like if you sat there practicing, but it's like you already had a good solution here. You already had something that works. So why, why go, well, let's move it over here and that'll differentiate our product. And I'm sure a bunch of people went out and bought them, but then you realize, okay, you have something different, but it's not an improvement. In some ways, front flippers are actually a downgrade. I, I, I like that it doesn't stick out this way, so it, there's not that snag. So I guess maybe if I had to say there's a benefit to the front flipper, maybe that's it. There's no chance of you pulling this out of your pocket. It's snagging on anything. Now, most of the time, they will angle that at such an angle so that as you draw from your pocket, it won't snag on something, but theoretically something that sticks out that far, I guess it could. So aesthetically, I think it looks nicer here, but it doesn't actually work better. So that's my take on it. The knife in general, I would say this is probably one of the better under fifty knives, under $50 knives out there. It's a good bowler steel for, for what it is. It's really nice construction. You got G10, reversible pocket clip, comes with spare bits. <laughs> very, very cool. I give this one a, a total thumbs up. Check it out. It's a little on the heavier side. If you want something that's just a little more discreet, go find the Beluga Mini. Uh, they're on Amazon. I'll throw links up there in the description. But as far as this goes, that's a very, very cool knife. like it a lot. I'm going to carry this one for sure.